Ladies and gentlemen, we are here at Andrews University, located in the great city of Berrien Springs, Michigan. Today is a very, very special day. You see all the people who are here to pay tribute, because again, this is a very, very special day here at Andrews University. Not only is it their alumni day, but it's even special, special than that. We are paying tribute to Dr. Walter Douglas. 35 years he served here at Andrews University. Andrews University is a seven-day Adventist school. It is one of the most premier and largest seven-day Adventist schools in the United States of America located here. Students from all over the world comes right here to our city, Berrien Springs, Michigan, and they come here for their education at Andrews University. You name the continent, they come here to the United States in Berrien Springs. But Dr. Walter Douglas is the special, he is the featured guest for this event. We are so excited to be here. You see his family, they've come from all over. You see others in the room and they're still coming in. We want you to stay tuned as we showcase one of the best of the best of Andrews University, Dr. Walter Douglas. Some of you may be watching this from Trinidad, from Tobago, or from Benton Harbor, Michigan. Dr. Walter Douglas in Benton Harbor was very important in the steps that was taken with Southwest Michigan's race relation. He is the uncle of Dr. Desmond, sharing with you later today. The ceremony will be starting momentarily. We are so glad that you are here with us. Doesn't matter what city, state, or continent you are from, we hope you enjoy the tremendous, exceptional life. One thing we know about him, before you hear all the other comments that he is indeed a man who have dedicated his whole entire life in serving others. The ceremony itself will speak much, much more, and it should be starting momentarily.
Lord, thank you for the rich legacy he has left behind. And today we mark this milestone by renaming the church history suite in his memory so that generations yet unborn will come and see this place and remember the work, his work, and the legacy that he's left behind. Father, we want to invite your Holy Spirit, your sweet presence to be in our midst right now. We pray that everything will be done for the glory and the honor of your great name. For we pray in Jesus' name. Thank you once again. I'm going to give you a brief biography of Dr. Walter Douglas uh, before we uh, start with the others. Uh, he comes from the beautiful island of Grenada, Spice Island. Uh, in the fall of 1969, while pursuing graduate studies at McGill University in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, Walter Douglas received a letter of invitation from Dr. Richard Hamill president of Andrews University, Barry and Sprint, Michigan. This letter invited him to join the faculty at Andrews University Theological Seminary. And accepting the invitation, he requested a three-year leave to complete his degree before beginning his tenure at the seminary. On the completion of his degree in 1972, he began his work as the first black member of the faculty to teach at the seminary. During his tenure, he was professor of church history and mission. He served the department for 10 years while being professor and chair. Dr. Douglas founded and directed the Institute of Diversity for the University. Prior to this, he was appointed as affirmative action officer and ombudsperson for 10 years. Through his varied professional experiences, Dr. Douglas has had the opportunity and privilege to work with and train individuals in a diverse array of backgrounds and cultures for the Seventh-day Adventist Church. He has a distinguished career as a diversity practitioner and consultant, having conducted seminars and lectures in Australia, New Zealand, Africa, Asia, South America, the Caribbean, and across North America. Dr. Douglas has published widely on issues of diversity, multicultural education, world religions, missions, and church history. For his distinguished service and commitment to these issues, Dr. Douglas has been recognized both internationally and nationally. He served as a board member of several institutions and organizations who are engaged in the work of diversity and inclusion. Some of these are the Institute of Diversity and Leadership at Lake Michigan College, Women in Renewal, Council for Minority Education, the YMCA Board of Directors, the Benton Harbor St. Joseph Board of Trustees at the, University of, at the University of Southern Caribbean, Hodges University Council of Diversity in Naples, Florida, Naples Gulf Coast Rotary Board, Naples YMCA Board, WGCU Television and Radio Diversity Council at Gulf Coast University in Fort Myers, Florida. He was also one of the founders of the All Nations Church in Berrien Springs, Michigan, and was the lead pastor from 1988 to 2004 while still teaching at the seminary. Over his long and distinguished career, he has received a number of honors. I want to just give you a few uh, examples of these. He received the Jane Andrews Medallion, the Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters from the University of Southern Caribbean, the Distinguished Scholar Award from the University of Southern Caribbean, the Martin Luther King Legacy Award, the Paul Harris Fellow from the Rotary Foundation of Rotary International, Naples, Florida, Pastoral Evangelism and Leadership Council Award from Oakwood University, Race Relations Council Award from Southwest Michigan College. Uh, he's a graduate, of course, of uh, Caribbean College and also three times graduate of Andrews University, BA, MA, and MJ. He also received a Master of Sacred Theology from McGill University and a PhD from McMaster's University. Presently, Dr. Douglas resides in God's country, Naples, Florida, with his wife, Yvonne, of over 57, I think 58 years now, I think this was written last year. They are the proud parents of three children, Dr. Vonda Douglas, Nikita, MD, Assistant Dean of Diversity and Inclusion, Associate Professor of Pathology at o Oakland University, William Beaumont School of Medicine, and Medical Director of the Flow 
Cemetery a Laboratory at Beaumont Health Royal Oak, Michigan. Uh, Dr. Derek Douglas, JD, LLD, Honorary Doctorate from Andrews University, Vice President for Civic Engagement and Public Policy at the University of Chicago. Lavon A. Brown, PhD in Counseling Psychology, is a licensed clinical psychologist in Maryland. The Douglases are also proud to have six grandchildren, Colin and Avery Brown, Yvonne Emma McKeaton, Anaya Quinn, and Milo Douglas. After his retirement from the seminary, Dr. Douglas continued to minister in the Southeastern Conference of SDA for 14 years as the pastor of the Golden Gates All Nations Church in Naples, Florida. He retired from his position in 2019. Uh, just a personal note, when I was a student here at the university in 1983, I took two classes from Dr. Douglas, Contemporary Trends, Christian and Non-Christian Religion. And I was really uh, inspired and fascinated by the energy and the passion of this professor. And from then on, Dr. Douglas has continued to inspire me. And I can say, for those of you who know my history, I can say today, if it were not for Dr. Douglas, his energy, his persuasion, his persistence, uh, I would not be a professor here at the seminary today. And so I am eternally grateful for his mentorship and for his leadership. And so I will always be grateful for his, uh, for his dedication. I also want to say a word about his wife, who is one of the great prayer warriors uh, in the church. Whether you like it or not, it was her prayers that also prayed me into the seminary. If you want to get something done, talk to Dr. I mean, talk to uh, Yvonne Douglas. Let her pray about it, and it will happen. Because somehow she has a special ear. She has God's special ear. And so today I wanted to say thanks for coming, and we're going to follow the program as it is outlined. All right. Uh, I think uh, John, are you up next? Thank you very much, and it's a pleasure to have Dr. Douglas here and all of his family. I'd like to welcome you, and of course everyone else who has, has come here. Um, I unfortunately did not have the pleasure of working with Dr. Douglas, and now you've heard all the biography now, so there's not a lot I can give you with facts. Um, but what, once you come into a, a setting like Andrews University, you start putting out your ear to hear about a legacy. What has made a difference? What has made the university what it is today? Who are the names out there? And it, I, this is not a quantitative research piece that I'm going to give you now. Maybe more qualitative with a bit of quantitative with it. But the name that I have heard, maybe more than any other name, uh, was that of Walter Douglas. And uh, I believe for a very good reason. Uh, Dr. Reggio has just mentioned a few things from, from his own experience, and those are the words I've heard over and over again. Inspirational, passionate, about his discipline, about his teaching, about, about the church, about ministry. But I've also heard very often the word wise, wisdom, thoughtful engagement on difficult and sensitive topics with the capacity to bring people together, a healer and a builder. Uh, I noticed that one of the side responsibilities you had on this campus was to be the ombudsperson for 10 years. Uh, I know that requires an awful lot of wisdom, the capacity to listen, understand, and So uh, when I saw the information coming through, and the plans of the seminary to rename this suite in your honor, I've got to say, no one was there to see it, so I can't prove it, that I smiled. Because this seemed uh, such an appropriate and a, a right thing to do uh, for you who have given so much to this seminary, to this university, and to our church. So thank you very, very much. And we are delighted that we're able to give you this small honor. I, I look at all this list of all these.
it's obvious you had, uh, and but I think, ah, does this match up? But it's not about matching up, it's about us saying to you, uh, very genuinely as a university, how important you are and what you gave to us is to us.
Well, I knew that you were a useless sea when you were in Canada. <laughs> and it's, it's very nice, uh, you are Grenadian. Um, it is absolute delight for me as a dean of the seminary to also uh, say a few words of appreciation for this great honor we would like to give you and are giving you because we know that you are this great man. You are not only Grenadian, but now let me use this uh, little text which is here on, uh, on that uh, you know, invitation. It's from First Peter 4.10. And I would like to use that. You are this faithful steward of God's grace. And uh, for that I really would like to pray the Lord. You are a professor and uh, the chair here for many years, 35 years plus of service. But what I remember you most, it was from your preaching in the Old Nations Church. I remember when I came here, as when I was here as a first uh, student in uh, 1980 to 79 to 80, you were already there, right? And I was uh, going there to hear you to preach there was packed church always. Uh, it was uh, full of different colors, which was very nice, very beautiful. But always there were some topics which were so hot in the church. Of course, it is, uh, we know there was uh, plenty of diversity. But I was always happy to go there and listen to the discussions you had in the morning uh, sermon and then in the afternoon. There were plenty of panel discussions, and I learned a lot. So thank you for doing it and giving us uh, a joy example and model how to be relevant to different discussions in the church. The second thing I would like to express is that uh, you are not only a professor of uh, church history with a specialty for uh, English Reformation, I would like to uh, say more personally from what I heard, you are also the specialist on diversity. I think that uh, you are the first person who came to this community and were allowed uh, to really settle down in this community. I heard the stories how it was difficult that when uh, you knocked on the door and you already knew this will be the, the best uh, the house for me, then uh, always the, the person where they realize who you are according to the color, they go off. But then somebody helped me, right? Uh, and you were the first one who actually stayed here in this uh, community of Korean Spring. And actually, I, am, I was your, your, or later on, your neighbor <laughs> because I, I see your house practically every day. So uh, this was very good, and um, yeah, before I will go and sit down, I need to hear from you a promise. Because I know that as a professor of uh, church history and specialty in the Reformation, uh, with all this richness of uh, knowing Adventism and what was going on in Adventism and with diversity and uh, racism, you have very rich knowledge about issues of racism and Adventism. And I want that you will promise me today, when we will talk together, that you will not leave this place uh, without that promise that you will put everything down in writing. <laughs> because we need that for next generations. Yeah. And we need to learn. Because if we don't know the history, we will repeat the same mistakes. And I really so um, yeah, we are really uh, glad and privileged to, to have you as our colleague, as our pastor, and our uh, personal friend. And yes, we want to give you small appreciation, but I assure that God, the one, can say, yes, this is the one faithful steward, servant.
slight change. I'm going to ask Dr. Jerry Moon, who was the dean, I mean, who was the chair that succeeded Dr. Douglas, just to come and say a few words.
And I remember as a young person, I never really knew what my dad did, if I'm being honest. I knew he was a professor at Andrews, I knew he was a professor in the seminary, but I didn't know exactly what he taught, I didn't know exactly what his research was. But I knew he was very important, and I knew the work that he did was important. And the reason I knew that, it's not because of what he said or what my mother said, it was because I saw how people interacted with my father. I was able to see with my eyes when colleagues like Ken Strand or Larry Gary who all give tribute to would engage with him and the respect they had for him and the admiration they had for him. And I would see and hear from his students, like Dr. Riggio, um, about the impact that he had on their lives. Um, pretty much any church I go into with my father, he will say it's the preacher with my students. All around the country and I think some of the proudest moments he had is when he was in a church and one of his former students was up there ministering. And the joy that he derived from that, having had that kind of impact. And so, while I didn't know the details, I knew that the life my father lived was an impactful life. And I view this honor that we're so thankful for as a family that you're giving you today as further evidence of the impact that he has had on so many lives. What I can tell you is that as impactful as he has been through his teaching, through his scholarship, to the university, to the seminary, he was even more impactful to us as his children. He was the quintessential father. And I think when I was thinking about what he did for us that was so important, he gave us those two things that I think are the most important things that a parent can give, two, among the most important things. One was unconditional love, and the other was unconditional belief in him. And I think that Dad, um, the life that you lived here at the seminary was the same life you lived at home, and I want to thank you for that, and I want to share my honor and respect to you for all that you've accomplished in your life. And I also have to give a shout out to my mom because they're a team and she's been with him. They're best friends and they've been that way for 57 years. And I know my father would say he wouldn't be getting this honor if it weren't for my mother. So with that, let me just read this tribute from another one of my father's colleagues um, who was a dear friend of his, Dr. Larry Gary. Here it is. I wish to congratulate the Church History Department for naming its suite in honor of its most illustrious former chair and my close friend, Dr. Walter Douglas, with whom I served on the faculty from 1972 to 1985. He distinguished himself through his teaching, research, publications, preaching, and mentorship of the current leadership of the denomination worldwide. His example of integrity, thoughtfulness, fairness, generosity, inclusion, and commitment to truth still stands as a beacon of light to all of us. Your act today preserves that luminous example for generations to come. Quote, his life will endure for all time and his name will never be blotted out. End quote. Ecclesiastes 44. Walter, Yvonne, the Douglas family, it is an honor to be here in this occasion to, to say that my mentor, Walter Douglas, has helped me to be more than I could ever have been without him. I, I, I must say that uh, I never imagined that I would be a professor at Andrews University when I was the troublemaking little kid that I was for so long. But when I got here, my very first class was with Walter Douglas. In the very first day of class, he invited us 
to consider writing a paper instead of taking the final test. And I always love writing papers and doing research uh, rather than, than testing. Uh, and so I went to him and I said, listen, I, I have the, the letters of Greg the Great. Can I, can I read the letters of Greg the Great and give you uh, a, a research analysis of his interaction uh, with the emperor? And he says, by all means. And I said, uh, but you don't know me. You, do you know that I can do this? He says, I know you can do it. That was his attitude toward everybody. When he first met them, he was a can-do person. And he makes you a can-do person. The two things that I value most from what I learned from Walter Douglas, besides his devotion to God and his devotion to his family, is wisdom in the face of politics. And the second is you can do it. But there's a caveat in the second one. He, he, your greatest strength is also your greatest weakness. You see, he taught me to say yes. And now I don't know how to say no. <laughs> but I share that with Walter Douglas. He's, he's just retired for the second time a couple of years ago after 14 years post-retirement pastoring and continuing to work and work and work. Walter, you've been my model. I greatly appreciate what you've done for my wife and I. Teresa, who is currently on medical leave from being the associate dean of the seminary, was also mentored by Walter. I don't think either of us recognized what we could become before Walter did. And I think the highest praise I can give him is that he believes in the people he leads because God. While we're getting this video up, uh, the, the second part of this program here is that we're all going to march upstairs to the church's suite to have the unveiling of the portrait of Dr. Walter B. T. Douglas. So when we're finished here, we're going to ask you to come with us upstairs so we can see this portrait that has been so beautifully done by Dr. Pa I mean, Mr. Mark Hunt uh, here, uh, he did a, a fabulous job as you're going to see later on, but I just want to express appreciation uh, for the work, the tremendous work. Checked all of this before, it was working fine. Oh, yes, sir.
Well, in order for, for, the, for, the, for time's sake, I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Vanden Keaton to come up and uh, make her remarks while we're getting this uh, video together.
Um, of course, we have to acknowledge my mom really quickly as well because there'd be no my dad without my mom. And so, but of course, we're just acknowledging you. So we, I thank you, Dad, for all that you've done. We appreciate you. We love you. I was just thinking recently, when you look, you, 
They kind of read the positions my sister and brother and myself have. And when you look at what we've done in our careers, I never thought about it, but we all have this kind of thread going through, which is advocacy and involvement, community and diversity. And you know, I, I clearly I think that has been in part to us by my dad. We've already taken active official administrative um, um, uh, positions in those areas. And so this idea that you are not just here for yourself, you are here to make a difference, you're here to help other people, you're here to make it better, is something that um, my father, I think a unique feature that I have found very helpful that my father imparted to me. Now, I have spoken to you as a daughter. You've gotten a lot from me. And, and I would say again, the unconditional love that both of my parents, as my sister said, you know, my grandfather used to say, I'm the head of the house and my wife is the neck. And everywhere I turn, that's where my head has, head has to go. And my mom is the foundation. And their unconditional love and support really has been, I think, the bedrock. My brother and sister and I know that there's nothing in this world we could do that would, would, would remove us from their love. And that love is a, is a people into Christ's love. And you could really understand Christ's love when you have parents such as ours. I just want to say a few words quickly. Um, I also, my advocacy has taken me to do a lot of administrative work, as I said, I'm assistant dean for diversity at the medical school where I work. And also, with uh, encouragement of my father, I accepted a position on the board at AU. So uh, I'm going to speak a little bit from the position of a board member, I'm an alumna of uh, Andrews University, and just talk about what I think my father has done as someone who's experienced it from student all the way up this university and, and many of this, much of this you've already seen, but I just think generally my, my sister and brother have talked about it, you know, especially when you work in the seminary, the impact you have on our church is tremendous. I mean, you are training people who are the pastors who go out and train and administer to the world. And so, so many, as my sister said, there's never a church we go to. One time my daughter, we were walking out of church, someone somehow again found out we were Walter Douglas is, I was Walter Douglas' daughter, she just said, Mom, Grandpa's really famous. Everywhere we go, people know Grandpa. I said, that's true. But, <laughs> but it's really not the fame. It's the impact that you've had, Dad, on other people, on training them, and, and on um, um, kind of forming pastors who have that holistic, uh, the holistic view. And, and not one person, I mean, I have his daughter, so I don't know who would come to me and say something like that, but not one person has said anything but, you know, Doc did this for me, you know, your father really helped me. So the impact that you have not just on the AU community, but, you know, uh, worldwide, it's tremendous. Uh, finally, I'd just like to say, and this touches on what my sister said, the impact you have on me as a black female alumna. Um, as I've gone through as a student, uh, med school, I've taken the faculty position, now I'm assistant dean on the board. Every, it's become more and more clear to me what having someone who looks like you, who understands what you're going through, and who will advocate for you in the face of pushback means. It is tremendous. And the role that you've played, I think, in that aspect might be more than people can understand. Just knowing even one person can make a tremendous difference in someone's life and their ability to push forward in the face of adversity. So I've taken on that role largely because of you. I do some ombudsman work in my university now, and I'm on the phone with my dad all the time. Dad, is that, what should I, is this okay? Did I say the right thing? Is this okay? So I'm constantly drawing on that wisdom. Um, I'm gonna stop now because I could go on all day. But as you know, my dad is a truly, truly remarkable man, and above all, a man of God. I'm going to end with this. The most important thing my, my father has imparted to us, to the university, to the world, is authenticity. My father has walked the walk. We didn't turn on to be preachers' kids because we didn't have a father preaching one thing in the pulpit and doing another thing in the house. My father is authentically who he is. He authentically loves Christ. He authentically is a Christian who we always say he's a Christ follower. And for that, Dad, we thank you, we love you, and we're so proud of you. We are going to use the microphone on my computer to, for, these, for these messages. But before
before we do so, I'm going to invite Dr. Uh, Clifford Jones, who is the president and the dean of the School of Religion at Oakland University, who was a colleague of Pastor Walter Douglas and also succeeded him as pastor of the All Nations Church, just to say a few words uh, as we bring our event here to a close. And then I'm Pastor Douglas, Dr. Douglas, is going to say a final word of response after. Thank you, uh, Dr. Reggio, and good afternoon, almost evening. Um, good afternoon to one and to all. Here he is, Mr. America, <laughs> Mr. World. There's not much I can add to what has been already said about this incomparable gentleman. Husband, father, pastor, professor, researcher, Dr. Walter B. T. Douglas. Don't forget the B. T. Um, I first met Dr. Douglas in the early, in the mid to late seventies when I came here to school. I had heard, and we had heard so much about. Walter B. T. Douglas, the first black here at the seminary, a person from the Caribbean, I'm from Trinidad. And so Dr. Douglas meant a lot to us, and we certainly looked up to him and admired him. Actually, we were in awe. Dr. Douglas, as you've heard, is a scholar pastor, or pastor scholar, either way, who uh, exemplifies and epitomizes servant leadership, genuineness, transparency, authenticity, as you have heard. There's some things about him that um, I wish to share, and that is I have never ever, ever seen Dr. Douglas upset or even exasperated. He is always calm, always balanced, always laughing, jovial, affable, doesn't matter what is being discussed, what's on the table. Um, but he would be positive, buoyant, and upbeat. I have never I also have never heard him speak ill of anyone. I have never heard him speak ill of anyone. He looks on the bright side, sees the best in people, underscores and lifts up the best in people. Uh, he's a, and has been over the years, a true, true friend. He shares and he empowers, he lifts up, and he propels people forward. I can say that I've been a mentor, mentee of him, he's been a mentor of me, and I thank God for what he has poured into my life. He is one of the few people to this day who calls me, not by, by my name, but a nickname. He calls me Cliffy. Yay, Cliffy! Yay, Cliffy! <laughs> and uh, and uh, we love him for that. His wife, we've all had many, many years. As I just mentioned, I'm from uh, Trinidad. Her father was my pastor as a boy, Pastor Sebo. He was my pastor as a boy uh, back there. And he was a praying pastor, so that's where Yvonne has gotten that uh, gift from her dad. He was a praying pastor who often broke down in tears while he prayed. I'll never forget that. He was not just a preacher, but a praying pastor, and a weeping, like a weeping prophet. A weeping prophet, as it were. So, uh, the influence in my life of the Douglasses extend quite a bit, and uh, we thank God again for uh, 
using them to pour wisdom and uh, goodness and uh, joy and positiveness uh, over the years. I've been blessed to follow in his uh, footsteps here and there, including at the All Nations Church, John and Terry. And uh, we thank God for the foundation that uh, the Douglas has laid there for the several, several years that they served. And so, uh, greetings and uh, continued blessings, Doc and uh, Yvonne, as you continue to serve. I can think of no one uh, more fitting to have his uh, or her portrait etched in granite. And we thank Mark Hunt for his giftedness and for what he has done. I can think of no one more deserving to have their uh, image indelibly etched outside the door of the Christian of the Church History Department than Dr. Walter B. T. Douglas. Thank you, thank you, God, for all that you have meant, not just to me, but for generations of preachers across North America and around the world. There's hardly a preacher that you run into who was not influenced in some way by Walter Douglas here at the seminary. I bring to you greetings on behalf of our president, uh, Dr. Leslie Pollard, former student of yours, and Dr. Ron Smith, another uh, former student of yours, and uh, I hope we're able to hear from them, from them momentarily. God bless you. Continue blessings. Congratulations, Yvonne. 
and the children, your dad deserves it. We love you. You you all, you all were like our little brothers and sisters. We went to the homes and you always welcomed us and served all of us. It was just a remarkable experience. May God bless you. Congratulations to the Douglas family and to my colleagues at the seminary. I commend you for having the vision and the foresight to permanently commemorate the contribution of this great servant of God. May God bless you. Oakwood University salutes you, Dr. Douglas. to express my deep-seated honor and appreciation for participating in what I consider to be a very momentous event, a very outstanding opportunity for me to partner with the circumstances that will celebrate the awesomeness of a man whom I've come over the years to love, and the person of Dr. Walter B.T. Douglas. I'm very honored today to acknowledge the achievement that, is, that has happened over the breadth and scope of your journey as, as a leader in God's church in varied venues. But most specifically, as I think back to the 1980s when I matriculated as a seminary student at Andrews University Theological Seminary, and Dr. Douglas, you were my professor in multiple classes, and I certainly value what God has done in my life because of your tutelage because of your careful engagement in my life, even over the years since Theological Seminary. Today, I understand there's a major celebration afoot. The History Department will be named in your honor. And I'm so delighted that the Walter B.T. Douglas Suite will be established with your portrait there, with the write-up surrounding your accomplishments, and thank God for the, for the wonderful legacy that will be sustained and passed on so young and bright minds will embrace the joy that so many seminarians, to myself, have enjoyed over the years. I wanted to say a word of celebration with you for this day. And you've given me so much counsel, and I want to return some of the counsel that you've given me. There are three proverbial statements that I trust, Dr. Douglas, you will never forget, even in your moments of relaxation slash ministry skill. Number one, factor God into your journey. In all your ways, continue to acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Second proverbial statement, continue to dream the gigantic dreams that you've dreamt over the years. Without a vision, the people perish. Not only are you to factor in God and to dream big as you have done so admirably, but finally another example that showcased and sort of put your ministry on steroids, and that is you've worked hard. Yes, factor in God, dream big, but work hard. Another proverbial statement suggests, go to the end, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. Thank you for the great legacy you have left so many of us through your factoring God into your journey. What a wonderful example you are and have been. By dreaming big dreams, which I believe makes this day a reality. And lastly, you've worked hard. And every accolade, every kudo, every affirmation, every recognition, obviously is a byproduct of your hard work and your large heart. Dr. Douglas, I celebrate and congratulate you on a wonderful achievement on this day. May God bless you as we continue our warm relationship. And may God grant you continued days of wonderful health, of wonderful friendship and love, Good food, good rest, and a wonderful journey for the rest of your days. May God bless you.
serve without any thought of reward. First of all, I want to thank my God for his goodness, his mercy, his grace that sustained me <coughs> during my 35 years of ministry service here at the seminary and more particularly in the world of church. Teaching at the seminary was indeed a privilege, a responsibility, an opportunity, and a challenge that I value greatly. So I want to thank the administration, President Luxton, Provost Renadian, <laughs> <laughs> and the Dean, Dr. Pascala, for embracing and supporting the idea to pay tribute to my service in the church and for the church in this fashion. I thank you so much. I must also thank my friend, Dr. Trevor Origio and his colleagues in the church history department for birthing the idea and making it happen. I'm humbled and overwhelmed by the generosity and kindness you extend it to me by demonstrating it in establishing this legacy in my name. The Walter B. T. Douglas Church History Suite. I offer to the Dr. Dr. Trevor Mauricio special thanks heartfelt thanks as the lead person in guiding me through this process. He communicated with me. I was telling John that I was on my way home from the YMCA <clears throat> when I got the call. And he said, Doc, um, the church history department has just recommended to name the church history in your honor. I said, what are you talking about? He repeated it. And I was driving, and when he repeated it, I almost ran off the road. <laughs> I was shocked. <clears throat> I couldn't understand. So I went over and I told my wife the story. And she very, and she very calmly said, that's nice. <laughs> See the difference? <laughs> Indeed, this one is one I value greatly. I also want to thank my former students and colleagues who sent in their congratulations, Larry Garrity, Ron, Les, and others. My students were my friends. We hang together. We went out to eat together. We were always in my home. And we played dominoes together. <laughs> and some of them didn't like the results. <laughs> Including Dr. Origio. <laughs> I also want to thank my children who have done so well. I'm so glad they didn't get any deeper in sharing things that should not be shared in public. <laughs> thank you, Derek. Thank you, Bonda and the Bar. God has blessed us with three wonderful children. By His grace, we have all done well. We have supported my career and just 
So they know this. I still need that support, but in a different way. <laughs> you know what I mean. Also, I should say that uh, it is impossible. It is impossible to articulate the extent, the full extent of my love and my heartfelt gratitude to my wife for 57 years and in December it will be 58 years of life together. Her wisdom, her prayers, her judgment, her common sense, her Christian character, and her mental toughness. Of parented skills. All these virtues and qualities are woven into the fabric and the narrative of my life and are enduring. So thank you, sweetheart. I am here because you are here. As brother, my daughter one always says, Dad, you know that without mom. You would be what you are today. And she says it without apology. <laughs> so this is where we are. There are other friends that have written in and called and offered me congratulations. Some of these friends we go way back. Way, way back. To the campus of Caribbean Union College. Now the University of the West End. Ah, I'm sorry. So that the University of Southern University. You know what it is. Southern Caribbean University. How could I make that the same? Southern Caribbean University. I need you to know that what we are establishing here this evening started on that campus. That's where it started. I'm eternally grateful to that school. And my wife and children would know and understand why. I'm eternally grateful for that college in Arrakis Valley. My nephew is here, Desmond, Desmond Murray. I don't see him on, I don't think Yvonne is here. No, no, keep on, keep on. Oh, you're on. Wave your hand. <laughs> <laughs> I mentioned them because their mother, my sister, played a critical and decisive role in my early formation. And she's not here to share this legacy with me. So I do want you to communicate that to her, please. Now, please. Okay. <laughs> Let me end with a express this, but I'll say that anyway. Where is Mark? Mark, you make me look good. <laughs> you make me look good. You're a creative genius. Yeah, brilliant. Land, many of us made it is my home, hanging in my home. But this one, oh, how I love for those days. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for sharing this occasion with us. Oh, Fran, Fran. I have to mention Fran. Fran, please stand. Please stand. Fran was my secretary for more than 10 years. And she taught me how to say no, which I never learned. So this is the trick. Whenever somebody called to see if they could get me to do a speaking engagement, Fran would say, he's already scheduled. <laughs> That's how she protected me. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you so much, Fran. And Al for being here with us today. God bless you. And all your come. Jim North, thank you. My dear friend Bob and Madeline, we have Bob and Madden have been close friends of ours all these years. Great intellect, brilliant author, author. We love you very much. 
thank you for sharing this moment with us. And if I have an opportunity to interact with others after this program, I'll be happy to do so. God bless you. Let's go upstairs, take a look at that portrait right now. And then make sure you say. 